Broccoli is one of those things that definitely tastes better fresh and homegrown rather than store-bought and frozen. Unfortunately, it also has the reputation of being difficult to grow. Until now, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take your broccoli growing to the next level. Let me know down in the comments if you've grown broccoli and if you've had success or not so much success. There are a few things you need to know to grow great broccoli. Now I harvested some the other day and it was perfect. Huge compact heads, yet super tender and crunchy all at the same time. Now I'm gonna take you all the way through the broccoli season step by step so that you too can get a great harvest. Broccoli is a cool season vegetable and it can be planted at two different times throughout the year. The first time is in late summer, early fall. The second time is in late winter, early spring. Now, if you're gonna be growing broccoli starting now in late winter, early spring, you just need to know that broccoli will take up garden space for about five months. So if you plant it now, you may not be taking it out until June. Now, if you've got plenty of growing space, totally fine. Now, if you're like me and you're limited on space, then you need to get creative and do some intercropping. Now, intercropping means planting companions around your broccoli that get along well, that are gonna produce throughout the same time period. So you're getting double use of your space. Now, good companions for broccoli are lettuce, um, arugula, spinach, and beets. And you can sprinkle the seeds around your broccoli, or you can put in transplants. With quick growing crops like lettuce and arugula, you can get several harvests in the amount of time it takes for those broccoli to actually do their thing. Now would be a good time to mention a few varieties um, that you might wanna grow or stay away from depending on your climate. If you have a short growing season, then you wanna stay away from purple sprouting broccoli. That needs a very long growing season to produce. Even here in my mild climate, I have a problem getting it to produce in time for me to wanna to take it out and put summer stuff in. If you live in a mild climate and your fall temperatures are above 80 or your spring temperatures heat up too quickly and they're above 80 before the broccoli is finished, then you might need some heat tolerant varieties. A couple of those would be Sun King and Bell Star. In the spring, you're gonna to wanna to start your broccoli seeds about four to six weeks before your last frost date. Now, if you don't know what last frost date is, um, I have a video on that that I did last Sunday. It's called What to Grow in February. And I talk about frost dates and I also go over a worksheet that I created where you can download it from my website, nextlevelgardening.tv. And you put in your frost date when you know it and it tells you then when to plant everything that you wanna plant automatically. It fills in those dates so you know when to plant things like broccoli or tomatoes or any other thing you wanna grow, it automatically shows you how to do that. So you can go over there for that free download. So four to six weeks before your last frost date, you're gonna sow them indoors and you can use a heat mat, but only if you have um, a heat mat with a thermostat because you don't want the soil temperature to go over 70 degrees. Now in the fall, you wanna get your seeds started in late July, early August, and you wanna get them into the garden as transplants about 50 to 60 days before your first frost date. Now it'd be great to be able to start them outdoors because there's no snow on the ground. Unfortunately, in most places in July, August, it's still gonna be above 80 degrees outside. Broccoli is a cool season vegetable and it just will not have a great time germinating with temperatures over 80 degrees. So you're gonna wanna start them indoors as well. Now you're gonna wanna sow your broccoli seeds about a quarter inch deep in well-draining sterile seed starting mix. Indoor potting mix is perfect for this. You're gonna water them from below if possible and keep the seeds moist but not wet. It's actually a, a good thing for the top of the soil to dry out between waterings. And you wanna have them under a grow light that is on for 16 hours a day and off for eight. I'll link a video that I did below on grow lights and one for every budget, or you can wait until next Saturday's Organic Gardening Basics series. Uh, our third episode is next Saturday and we're gonna be going over seed starting, grow lights, all that kind of thing. 
So make sure you're subscribed, ring the bell so you get notified when that comes out and when all my videos come out. And just a note, I really try to be present for the first two hours after my videos come out. So they generally come out about 7 a.m. Pacific time on uh, Saturday and Sunday and Tuesday right now. And so for those two out, the first two hours, I'm in front of my, com my phone or my computer to answer back and forth to questions and comments that you guys have. So if you have questions a lot, make sure you watch the video in the first two hours so I can make sure I get them answered for you. Now, whether you're sowing now or in late summer, it's gonna take about 10 to 14 days for germination. And once the seedlings have their first true leaves, the first leaves that come up out of the soil are the seed leaves. The second leaves are their first true leaves that kind of look like what the leaves actually look like when the plant gets bigger. That's when you can start to fertilize them. And you're gonna fertilize them with a um, general organic liquid fertilizer mixed half strength of whatever the bottle says. And you're gonna do that maybe every two weeks. And you all know I use Neptune's Harvest um, fish and kelp because that's a nice gentle fertilizer that gets the seeds off to a really great start. Now, because they are frost tolerant, you can actually plant your broccoli transplants out into the garden two weeks before your last frost date. They like rich, moist soil and they love sunshine. However, it is said that if you grow them in the shade uh, or have shade, that you'll get smaller heads. I don't know if I believe this because these beds behind me are where that harvest of this picture came from. Yeah, I'm gonna show this picture a lot because I'm really proud of this broccoli. <laughs> but these beds only get four hours of sun per day in the winter. So they thrived in four hours of sun. But the more sun you can give them, the better. We'll just leave it at that. You're gonna plant them about 15 to 18 inches apart and you're gonna plant them in a two, one, two, one, two, one, two pattern, uh, kind of like you see on dice. Now I use a handful of Neptune's Harvest crab and lobster formula and their kelp meal in the bottom of every hole. This gets them started off with a good slow release organic fertilizer to take them through the season. And then I use the liquid tomato and veg formula throughout the season to give them that extra boost every two weeks. Now let's talk about pest control, something we have to talk about with every plant. Um, if you grow broccoli starting in the late summer, fall, and then through the winter, you're gonna have less pest issues because as the weather cools off, the bugs tend to die out. If you start them now, the weather's starting to get warmer, the bugs start to come out more. Not a big deal if you know what to look for and how to deal with it. So there's two main pests that love your broccoli. The first one is the cabbage worm. Those are those bright green little worms that can seriously take out a seedling in 24 hours. And you're gonna notice some chew marks on the edge of your leaves, maybe holes in your leaves. That's the sign of a cabbage worm. Now the best time to find them is early morning or in the evening. If you go out and look under the leaves, you'll probably find them. Maybe not all of them, but some of them, which you can pick off and get rid of. Chickens love them if you have chickens. Now these pests come from the cabbage white butterfly, which you've probably seen flitting around your garden every so often. Uh, those aren't friends. Now there's one way to prevent this problem, and that is to cover your crops from planting day with uh, floating row covers. And then just keep those on there until it's harvest time, and it provides a physical barrier between your plant and the butterfly. Now, if you don't like covering up your crops, which I don't blame you. Um, but if you don't like covering them up, then you're gonna have to keep an eye out for damage and pick them off as you find them. Another way to prevent them is by going out and looking under the leaves for the eggs of the uh, cabbage white butterfly. They're very small, bright green. Just take your finger and smear them off. Kind of gross, but it works. Now, if you have a huge outbreak, you can use a couple of different sprays that are organic. You can use an insecticidal um, soap, which is organic, or you can use BT, which is my personal favorite. It's an organic spray that does not harm beneficial insects, pets, humans. It only targets caterpillar type pests. It's going to target all caterpillar pests. The beneficial ones like monarchs and swallowtails, uh, it targets them too. So you might not want to spray it plants like um, 
milkweed, fennel, and dill. Don't spray it on those, and those will, that'll save your beneficial butterflies that we all love. Another pest to watch out for is the brassica aphid, or the cabbage aphid. These are powdery gray aphids. They, they come with a bunch of powder, and then the aphids themselves are gray as well. And the first thing you're going to see are the leaves starting to curl and be malformed. And if you open those curls up, you're going to see all those aphids in there. Now, this can be handled with insecticidal soap spray or neem oil. Neem oil is my personal favorite. Again, it's organic and it's safe for uh, beneficials. It's safe for pets and humans. You just don't want to spray it on bees. Don't spray bees because it can harm them that way. Um, and also don't spray any open flowers that bees are visiting. So it's best to spray neem oil in the morning or the evening when the bees are not present. Soon you're gonna see little baby broccoli heads forming at the center of your plant, and they're gonna continue to increase in size over the next few weeks. Now the timing of the harvest is important. You want to let the broccoli head grow to reach its maximum size, but you don't wanna have it go over and start to bloom. This is a broccoli head that went too far and started to bloom. Now they're really pretty, and honestly they would look great in a flower border, but if you're growing broccoli to eat, this is not what you're expecting. So once you see the heads start to loosen up, you'll see each little bud on that broccoli head start to swell, and that is when it's time to harvest. Now to harvest it, you just cut them off right below the head, right below the where it starts to branch into the head. But wait, there's more. The harvest isn't over. Down below, where you see the little armpits, where the leaves leave the stem, in each one of those armpits, you're gonna start to see little broccoli florets sprouting. Now, each one of those broccoli florets, those little babies, are gonna produce a broccoli about this size. Not gonna be as big as that main head, but these will continue to be produced as long as you keep plucking them off. The plant wants to reproduce, and they do that by making flowers that make seeds. So if you keep taking their flowers away, they're gonna keep producing them. Well, I think that's all you need to get your very own next level harvest of broccoli. If you learned something or enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps the channel a lot. Make sure you're subscribed and ring the bell so you get notified every time we put out a video. And I will see you next time.